So now it's time to talk about the modeling aspect of Datable. But first, let's uh, take a step back and uh, try to give a definition for modeling. So modeling can be thought of as the art of identifying the business objects or business concepts that are hiding inside of the data. We uh, understand these business concepts, understand how they relate be between each other, and uh, finally uh, translate this into a data model. Um, uh, we've already seen two approaches, two different approaches to uh, to the data modeling, there's a, a normalized approach used normally in the Inmon's approach to the, to the data warehouse, where data is stored in the third normal form with uh, low data uh, duplication. Uh, but there's also the um, the normalized approach where data is uh, organized into different dimensions. Uh, this is called the dimensional modeling introduced by Kimball. And, um, and uh, yeah, usually used on, on, on Kimball's approach. Uh, finally, uh, Data Vault lies uh, between in the middle of those two approaches. It's a kind of a hybrid between the uh, uh, normalized and the normalized approach where we store the data as it is found on the source system. So no further normalization, no further denormalization. We just store the data how we find it on the source system. And if it's already denormalized or uh, denormalized up to a degree, we keep it that way. If it's uh, normalized, uh, we, we continue that way also. Um, the main design after the uh, data vault model is inspired by networks that occur naturally in the, uh, yeah, that occur in the nature, such as uh, we can think of it, uh, for example, um, the uh, neuron, neurons in the, in the brain, where we have uh, hubs or nodes and links or uh, edges that connect these hubs together. On the data world model, each of these hubs represents a business concept, uh, a, a business key. And uh, these links model the relationship between these uh, business concepts together. Data Vault also uh, puts a very big focus on identifying the business keys and the business objects, trying to really understand how the business access this data and works with the data. Uh, by if uh, if we manage to really identify the, correctly the, these business objects, uh, we will be modeling very closely the, the business. So our data model will be very closely related to, to what the, the business really is doing. And um, this gives us the flexibility to adapt to the changes, big changes introduced by changing business requirements, and also the agility to do so very fast. We will see more on this on the next uh, session. section. So the data vault model is built over three basic components, the hub, the link, and the satellite. Each of these uh, components has a single responsibility that doesn't overlap with the, uh, with the other components. This is what gives data vault or the data vault model the flexibility and the agility that it, uh, that it provides. No? Um, we can think of this responsibility as the single responsibility uh, principle in the solid design principles of software engineering. By having each of the components uh, with a single responsibility that doesn't overlap with the rest, um, we limit the number of entities that need to be changed in case there's a, a, a change in requirements. In this case, if we look first of all at the hub, which could be thought of as a table that keeps track of a distinct collection of business keys, and each of these hub is going to model one business object, a business concept, okay? Um, the hub's responsibility is to decouple the management of the business keys from the rest of the attribute. So here we will only store the business keys. We will only store uh, the information needed to identify each of these uh, business objects and business concepts. So any changes to the way we identify the business concepts, uh, you will have to change the hub, but you won't have to go and change the model of the link or the model of the satellite. And that's the, the, the key 
And uh, that's where the flexibility and agility of Data Vault came from. If we switch to the link, uh, here a link, and going back to, the, the, to what we talked about, uh, the, the Data Vault model being a network, uh, links model the relationship between one or many hubs. They model associations, they model hierarchies when one concept is, one business concept, it's associated against it itself. And, um, and they are always modeled as a many to many relationship in the, if we think of the third normal form. So there's always a table that keeps track of the IDs of the, of the relationship. And you may be thinking like, why are we uh, modeling this as, as a many to many relationship? Because sometimes you may have a one-to-one -one relationship also, which is it's more simpler to, to model and you don't need a, a, an extra table for this. So this is part of the scalability and flexibility that uh, the data vault design has in mind from the beginning. If you model everything as a many to many relationship, any change on the on the business requirements that change the, the relationship between two entities will be absorbed by this uh, link entity. And out of the box, you will be able to, uh, you, without any changes, you, you are already able to model and accept this kind of relationship. Whereas if you went for a three normal form uh, implementation, you will have to change the model and impact all of your pipeline. Last but not, but not least, we have the satellite. Up to now, we've only talked about business concepts and relationship between business concepts. But where is the data? Where is the context of these uh, business keys stored? And the place is the satellite. The satellite will keep track of all of the descriptive attributes, all of the information that describes these business objects. And um, so it kind of adds context to, to these uh, hubs or even to the relationships to these links. And uh, the, the satellites, or we can use the satellites really to, to keep track also about time dimension. We can use the satellites to not only store the attributes, but the changes in the data, the changes in, the, in these attributes. So we could model satellites as a type two slow changing uh, dimension and uh, keep track of when of the validity of each of the of the um, attributes for a given business object and even keep track of all of the versions from this business object so we would be able to go back in time and ask the question what happened when on the next session we will look into the conclusions and advantages of the data model Thank you.